Virash Tatar, a system professor in the chemical engineering department of LGIT Ahmedabad. In this lecture, I am going to start new topic of the computer aided process synthesis. So let's start. Chapter name is synthesis of separation train and topic is type of condensers and column pressure. So we know that condensers are used in a distillation column. I told you distillation column is used to separate liquid mixture in which we are having two sections above the feed plate section is known as the rectifying section and below the feed plate section is nothing but stripping section. And we are using their two heat exchangers. First one is the reboiler which we are using in the stripping section to heat the liquid mixture. After that for the condensation purpose we are using another heat exchanger that is nothing but condenser that is used in the upper section of the distillation column that is nothing but rectifying section. So in this lecture I will explain you some different types of the condenser and how to use those condenser in a distillation column you will see in this lecture. So you can see on the screen this is the definition for condenser according to definition a condenser is a device or unit used to condense gaseous substance into liquid state through cooling. Means here we are transferring matter from the gaseous states to the liquid state and there are different types of the condenser are being used in the industry. For example, for air cooling purpose, after that water cooling purpose and third one is evaporating condenser. I will explain you all this condenser in next slide. But before that you can see on the screen, this is the application of condenser. So you can see here, condensers are used in air conditioning, that is nothing but air cooled condenser. After that industrial chemical processes such as the distillation also used condenser. I told you in distillation column you are using condenser to condense the vapors which are coming from the bottom section that is nothing but stripping section where we are fading the liquid mixture and we are heating that liquid mixture by using reboiler. And whatever the vapor generated in that section that is being cooled in the condenser that is available in the rectifying section. So in distillation column also we are using condenser. There are different types of the condenser for example partial condenser and total condenser. I told you in last semester in mass transfer as well, in total condenser, we are condensing whole vapor stream means their reflux is equal to 0 and distillate is equal to 100%. But partial condensation means we are getting two streams. Those two streams are nothing but liquid stream and distillate stream. And ratio of this liquid stream to the distillate stream is nothing but a reflux ratio. Similarly, there is another ratio available in the stripping section that is nothing but boiler pressure. And that boiler pressure is given by the V by B. V is nothing but vapor stream and B is nothing but bottom product stream. So these are very important question for your gate examination. Question may be asked like this in the exam. What is the meaning of boiler pressure? What is the meaning of reflux ratio? So reflux ratio is nothing but ratio of L to D. That is nothing but liquid stream to the distillate stream. And boiler pressure is nothing but it is the V by B. That is a vapor stream to the bottom product stream. Now we will see some important types of the condenser. Those are not partial condenser or total condenser. These two condensers, those are the partial and total condenser are used in distillation column. But there are some other types as well. Those are nothing but water cooled condenser, air cooled condenser and evaporated condenser. So you can see on the screen types of the condenser. This question can be asked for 3 to 5 marks in your exam. So first one is nothing but water cooled condenser. After that second one is air cooled condenser that is nothing but air conditioning. So you can see here third one is as well that is evaporative condenser. So all these three types of the condenser having some limitations. Now we will see what is the meaning of water cooled condenser, air cooled condenser and evaporative condenser. So you can see on the screen air cooled condenser. I told you that air cooled condenser means here we are cooling air. So if this question asked in your exam you have to write this definition you can see on the screen air cooled if the condenser is located outside of the unit means outside of the any of your industrial reactor the air cooled condenser can provide the easiest arrangement after that this type of the condensers eject heat to the outdoors and are simple to install means whatever the heat is they are removing means whatever the heat they are removing they are removing to the outdoors we know that air cooled condenser means we are using air conditioners means inside our room our temperature is minimum but outside of that room temperature is larger as compared to inside temperature. That is nothing but here heat is rejected to the outside of the room. Now second one is water cooled condenser. You can see on the screen water cooled condenser is costly as compared to air cooled condenser. Means you can see here although a little pricer to install 
this condenser means nothing but water cooled condenser are more efficient type means this condenser having more efficiency as compared to the air cooled condenser means here we are ejecting heat from the water to the outside and these are used in the swimming pools and various industries or i can say in the distribution of the water in the various cities so according to this point you can see on the screen now although little pricer to install this condenser are the more efficient means cost of this water cooled condenser is higher as compared to the air cooled condenser but efficiency of the water cooled condenser is more as compared to the air cooled condenser after that commonly used for the swimming pools and condenser piped for the city water flow this condenser requires regular service and maintenance means water cooled condenser having daily applications for daily applications means here we are providing condenser for the swimming pools for safety purpose regular service and maintenance is very necessary that's why cost of the water cooled condenser is higher as compared to the air cooled condenser now we will see last one that is your operative condenser means whatever the limitations are available in air cooled condenser and water cooled condenser all those limitations can overcome in this evaporative condenser so according to this evaporative condenser you can see here while these remain the least popular choice they are used when either water supply is inadequate to operate water cooled condenser or condensation temperature is lower that can achieve by air cooled condenser means there are two limitations in water cooled condenser water supply must be adequate if that is not adequate you can go for the evaporative condenser and secondly if the temperature requirement is not specific given then also you can go for the evaporative condenser and this evaporative condenser can be operated at the different temperature major applications of this evaporative condenser are operated at the lower temperature so you can see on the screen evaporative condensers can be used inside or outside of a building and under typical conditions operate a low condensation temperature i told you air cool condensers are installed outside of the building and water cool majorly installed inside of the building but this evaporative condenser can be installed inside or outside and these are the low condensation temperature these condensers are operated at the lower temperature so these are the different types of the condensers where i explain you related to the air cool condenser water cool condenser and evaporative condenser these different types of the condenser can be asked for three marks only now after that we will see algorithm for the establishing distillation column pressure i told you in distillation column we are having two section one is the rectifying section and stripping section and in distillation column temperature is decreasing from the top to bottom and pressure also decreasing from the top to bottom i told you in distillation column we are having maximum temperature at the lower section but minimum temperature and minimum pressure is available at the top section or i can say temperature and pressure is increasing top to bottom that's why there is a high boiling point mixture is nothing but bottom product and we are operating those product in a vacuum distillation i told you in vacuum distillation we are operating our distillation column under vacuum where we are operating our pressure is nothing but 30 to 50 mmhg that is nothing but less than one atmospheric pressure that is nothing but we are going to see in this slide now how to select condensers those are nothing but partial condenser total condenser in a distillation column i told you partial condenser means we are partially condensing our vapor stream means here we are getting two stream as the outlet stream from the condenser that is a distillate and liquid stream but in total condenser we are getting 100% distillate and 0% liquid stream that is nothing but reflux okay means 0% reflux is available in total condenser so now we will see algorithm for the establishing distillation column pressure this algorithm is nothing but experimental data this question can be asked in your exam for 5 to 7 marks for that purpose you have to remember this algorithm so to draw the algorithm for distillation column pressure you should know quantities of the feed quantities of the distillate quantities of the bottom product then and then you can draw this algorithm otherwise you cannot draw this algorithm so for exam purpose you have to remember these all steps in this algorithm you can see on the screen now so for that purpose you should know distillate and bottom compositions are known after that after knowing these compositions those are the distillate and bottoms for this purpose you can use mckep thele method to calculate the composition of distillate and bottoms you should know mckep thele method but this method or i can say calculation for this all this algorithm is not in your syllabus you have to just remember this algorithm exam point of view you have to just remember this algorithm step wise for your exam purpose 
means calculation of this distillate bottom or I can say pressure calculation or I can say bubble point calculation or I can say dew point calculation all you have seen in a CET and mass transfer operation. But for design purpose you have to just read this algorithm and you have to draw and you have to remember this algorithm step wise. So first one is you should know amount of the distillate and bottom after that after knowing this amount you have to go for the next step that is calculate the bubble point pressure or I can, bubble point is nothing but when your liquid starts to vaporize means first bubble whenever is there is forming or I can say whenever there is a first vapor form from the liquid that is nothing but bubble point and corresponding pressure that is nothing but PD. So that is nothing but PD at 120 degree Fahrenheit or I can say 49 degree Celsius. You have to remember all this temperature as well. This is the experimental data. You have to remember all these steps as it is. After calculating this bubble point pressure that is nothing but PD. You have to check that PD value like this. If that PD value is less than 215, you have to go for the next step. That is nothing but estimation of the bottom pressure. If that PD value is greater than 215, you have to go for the next step that is calculate dew point pressure. So dew point is nothing but it is the minimum temperature when your vapor starts to condensing and starts to form liquid. That temperature is nothing but your dew point and corresponding pressure is nothing but your dew point pressure. So you can see on the screen that PD is nothing but dew point pressure of the distillate at 49 degrees Celsius. Means first we have calculated their bubble point pressure. If that bubble point pressure is less than 215, you have to go for the next step. It is nothing but calculation of the bottom pressure. But if that PD is greater than 215, you have to calculate dew point. That is nothing but calculation of the dew point pressure at 49 degrees Celsius. After you have to check, after that also you have to check that PD value. If that PD value, that is nothing but dew point pressure is less than an is less than 360 psi you have to go for the estimation of the bottom pressure but if that is also greater than the 365 you have to go for the another step that is nothing but choose a refrigerant refrigerant is nothing but coolant by using refrigerant we can minimize the temperature I can say we can maintain the or I can say we can maintain the operating pressure so choose a refrigerant so as to operate partial condenser at 415 psi now after that, after choosing the refrigerant, you have to go for the next step that is estimate the bottom pressure. We have to go for this step only when our pressure values are not satisfying. If our bubble point pressure we are getting in the initial stage correctly, there is no need to calculate your dew point pressure. There is no need to calculate whatever your refrigerant temperature as well or whatever your refrigerant pressure as well. But if our PD value, but if our, but if our PD value is not correct, then you have to calculate here dew point pressure and you have to choose your refrigerant. After that we are selecting here partial condenser. I told you meaning of the partial condenser means that is nothing but we are partially condensing our vapor stream. We are getting here two steam that is nothing but a liquid steam and distillate. After that after calculating bottom pressure you have to go for the next step. That is nothing but bubble point temperature for the bottoms. After calculating this bubble point temperature now you have to check that TB that is nothing but bubble point temperature is less than bottom decomposition temperature or not. If that is the less than bottom decomposition temperature, you have to select that temperature now and you have to select that condenser type that is nothing but partial condenser. If that is not correct, you have to go for the previous step that is nothing but estimate bottom pressure again. After calculating this, you have to again go for the calculation of the bubble point temperature for the bottom. This cycle will be repeated until the your bottom temperature that is nothing but bubble point temperature for the bottom is less than the bottom decomposition temperature. So in this manner we can operate this distillation column and this is the algorithm for the establishing distillation column pressure and selection of the partial condenser or I can say total condenser. That is a depend on operating conditions those are the temperature operating temperature and operating pressure. So what we have seen in this lecture I have explained you related to the different condensers after that we have studied here algorithm to establish the distillation column pressure. This question means algorithm for the establishing distillation column can be asked for 7 or 5 marks in your exams. After that different types of the condensers those are the air cooled, water cooled or I can say operative condenser this question can be asked for 3 marks. So this is all about this lecture we will see next topic in the next lecture. Thank you very much.